So this is a cool cave behind me. It's called Big Bear Cave. And we're going to go explore it here in a few minutes. Uh, we don't have a lot of time. I had to hike several miles to get here. I thought it was a lot closer to the parking lot. If you look over there, that's the Potomac River. And I'm standing on the CNO Canal. And that's the cave. It's called Big Bear Cave. Legend has it that once every few decades, pieces of bodies are found in here probably torn apart by a giant bear or the spirit of a giant bear or big bear as a uh, as legend has it but we're going to go up in here and take a peek and go back in here a ways i'm by myself so i'm not going to go a long ways because you really should have two people with you when you're caving because uh, if you get like trapped in the rocks or your all your lights go out you should always have at least three sets of lights i have four today um, you know, having another person can maybe get you out of there. There's some really neat graffiti right there. We'll look at that. Uh, but I'm by myself, so we're not going to go too deep. But we are going to check it out some. Let's look at this. 18 something. What is that? 56? 18, 1856 with a shield? Hey, that's Masonic shield. You Masons might know what that means. I guess it's Masonic shield. There's another shield here. That's Harvey, H.A. Harvey. I can't read the last name, but you might be able to read it on the computer. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, go up in here a little ways, and we're going to sit down, let our eyes adjust to the dark for a few minutes, and then we're going to go exploring. It's a shame to see that someone has put spray paint all over the walls, but oh well. What can you do? It's right along the canal. <laughs> And while we're sitting here, uh, I'm letting my eyes adjust for just a few minutes. I did want to give a shout out to these guys over here at Through Night. Um, they have supplied me with flashlights over the past year or so. Uh, they contacted me one time and asked me if they could send me some. I said, sure, go ahead. The only stipulation was that if I liked them, I could give them a shout out every now and then. And I do like them. And I've given them shout outs before. But this one has made me feel extremely guilty. They sent me this a few months ago for camping because I told them I could use a bright flashlight for camping because if something is bothering you out there, whether it's a person or an animal, a really bright light can kind of blind them and disorient them. So I asked them if they could send me one. This thing is like super bright. It's like staring at you know, a star. It's really, really bright. It's LED too, which is nice, but it doesn't get too hot. Uh, so they sent me this thing and I put it in my truck. Recently they... <laughs> <laughs> they sent me a notice saying, oh, by the way, Bo, uh, we're going to put those on sale for Christmas. And it's like $40 off or something like that. And I'm thinking, $40 off? How much does a flashlight cost? So I looked it up. This is like 250 bucks for this flashlight. I had no idea. So they sent me a $250 flashlight that I basically just pitched to my truck and told them I'd, you know, try to work it into a video at some point and I do feel guilty about that and I apologize for that and I'm gonna put their links to uh, their website where you can buy them for 20% off at of 250 or whatever they are but I had no idea that you could buy expensive flashlights like that I mean having looked at other websites I mean they're like $350 $400 flashlights just like this <laughs> it's amazing but it is a well weighted flashlight and it's so freaking bright yeah, I understand now why they make them. I mean, with the LED and whatnot, uh, they can make them bright like that. But if you shine this in somebody's eyes, or like a bear's eyes at night, or a dog that's barking at you, they're not going to be able to see for like 15 minutes. So it does make a good, non-lethal defensive weapon, you know, in that regard. I mean, it's just incredibly bright. I mean, I blinded myself just looking. You can't look at it. If you look at it, forget it. I mean, even when just using it, it's kind of bright, so... I'm going to show you what it looks like back in here, but sorry for talking about flashlights forever, but I did want to give them a good, decent shout out since they were so kind to me to give me a $250 flashlight. I still can't believe it. All right, you ready? See, just like my eye, my eyes have adjusted and I should see back in there. And uh, let me go ahead and put throw my headlamp on and we'll use a small light mostly and the big light as needed. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of, <laughs> this is bad, um, take our time, walk back in here a little ways. 
I'm not sure how far we'll go, but we'll go as far as I'm comfortable with by myself. I tried to get my wife to come with me today, but um, she, this was like an all-day affair to get to where the other video was taking place and here. So, she didn't come. Ah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Look at that. Look for bats, okay? Because the bats love to hibernate in these caves. You see there's some water dripping from the ceiling. And it's making little baby stalactites. See right there, look. And they can grow down, down, down over the centuries. And get many, many feet or yards long. Ah, oh, looks like... <laughs> to say gold, but it really looks like urine. Look at that. I'll take his headlight off so I can hold it at a different angle. Maybe you can see it better. Kind of glowing like it's, uh, well, it's like it's amber, doesn't it? Hope that's not like bat urine up there. Can you see it? Glowing orange? It's a really weird color. I've never really noticed that before. And you can see where water does flow out, but it's dry now. Every once in a while you hear something scurrying around. I've never really run into a wild animal back in one of these caves. Like a raccoon or anything. I see bats all the time. There's a little moth up there. In fact, I'd be kind of surprised if you don't at least see a few bats. Oh, look at that poor moth. Look at that thing. Look. See how he's moving like that? That's a defensive uh, gesture or mechanism. He's trying to scare us away. It's covered with water. I don't know how it could live through the winter like that. I mean, they have to live for many months. You know, four or five months in here. Huh, I wonder what that's all about. Why would someone put that in the ceiling? Not like you need rope work in here. Not a whole lot in here, is there? I'd been here maybe 20 years ago and uh, did some exploring, but I uh, haven't really been back. It's not a it's not a very big cave. If I remember correctly, there aren't too many scary things in here. Shh. That's pretty. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. I like that. New formations up there. A little bit. That's a neat little shelf. Keep your eyes open. This might be a uh, geocache in here. We have found them in caves before, haven't we? I wonder why they put those in there. It doesn't seem like it's really needed, does it? I should have brought my uh, hard hat today, too. But we won't, uh, we won't overdo it, I promise. Wow. Ah, it's much warmer in here, too. It stays the same temperature year round. Why is that green? Why would that be green like that? It's like algae. Algae shouldn't be in here because there's no light. There's absolutely no light in here. That's kind of strange. Yeah, I have no idea why that would be green like that and how... I mean, it definitely looks like algae. Well, maybe it's something... Maybe it's something it must got to be something in the rock, some type of chemical. Ew, something just flew by me. <laughs> mosquitoes. I can't believe mosquitoes in here in the end of December. Looks like it goes that way. But this way is bigger, so let's go ahead and go this way. We might have to do a little crawling. I'm going to uh, strap the camera back or the uh, light back to my head. Looks like it's not a bayonet. Looks like a bayonet. I don't see any graffiti back in here. Okay, I'm going to put the light on. Hold on a second. Got our hands free, at least one hand free. Wow, that's pretty. deals where you really have to be here to see it. What might come up? Wow, look! That is so cool. I've never seen that before. Those are dro uh, droplets of water that have... Look, look at it. Wow. 
droplets of water with the light shining. For some reason, there's a green tinge to them. It's almost gold. Look at it. That is neat. I know that's not like amazingly amazing probably to you guys, but it is to me. I just, I really appreciate stuff like that. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, that is so neat. It's not like a little girl. Sorry, little girls. It's kind of interesting how people do that with their voices and they don't even know they're doing it. Because in some of people, I do it too. Look for geocaches. Oh, that's pretty. Look at that. Look how smooth that is. Looks like mud, but it's actually a calcium deposit, so it's pretty hard. Let's go need this rock, see if there's a geocache. If I was gonna hide geocache, this is where I'd put it, right here. Nope. There is mud there, and no bottle. Looks like that bottle out. Yeah. Uh, no water in it. Huh. Okay, well, let's go this way. Put that right there, we'll pick that up on the way back through. I don't have to carry it. What do you see? There's a broken bottle down in there. I'm not going to go get it, though. I can see what the stream flows through. I don't know if we get through there or not. Let's blast that with a big flashlight. Oh, look how bright that is. Cool. <laughs> oh, it doesn't melt the walls. It keeps going, but I'm not going to crawl through that since I'm by myself. In case I got wedged in there, and if you want to read a story about getting wedged in the rocks, an old time story. I would suggest you do a Google search for Floyd Collins and Mammoth Cave. Uh, it's about a kid who got trapped in a cave, and of course he ends up slowly dying because they couldn't get him out uh, but yeah he was used to cave by himself and that's the story that I grew up with in Floyd Collins I believe probably others by now you can tell that goes up in there a ways further let's put the big light on it ah, big light with a it's got a bunch of settings so like in the blaster setting probably don't need to put it on that one but oh look at that well, yeah, it keeps going up. We could definitely go up in there. We fit through there, no problem. But like I said, since we're by ourselves and I don't want to end up getting my arm trapped in uh, one of those crevices or my leg and having to saw it off with my non-existent knife because, of course, I don't have a knife again today. All right, let's head out and see what we can find. I went ahead and picked up the bottle and keep our eyes open for geocaches. Oh, that's just gorgeous. I, I'm going to get the show, though. But that's so neat. Look at that. You can kind of see that, can't you? Yeah, you can. <laughs> Not bad. It was this, what, January? No, it was this December, January, February, March, April. So he's got like five months he's going to live right there. Ooh. Battery's flashing, so we're just about out of juice on the uh, camera. That's a little bad. Look at how cute, isn't he? Back when I was a kid, when I was young and dumb, I used to actually pet the things. But uh, you should never, ever, ever do that. Because you don't want to wake them up. They won't die if you wake them up, but it, it wastes their energy. So don't ever do that. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off because it's flashing, and I want to do a wrap-up when we get out. The ceiling's kind of different, isn't it? Those stalactites up there. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. That is so neat. All right, let's see, go back out this way. We just follow that trail, that's where the stream runs down through there, so we won't get lost. Beautiful little cave, though. If we had a thunderstorm, we could always come in here and hide out. Plenty high above the river. I imagine the Indians probably used it. I know where there's some better caves than this. I think I might as well just go ahead and go there and take you to them, because these are much smaller than I remember. 
I used to do a lot of what they call spelunking or caving. And uh, there's not giant ones in my area, but there are some really interesting ones. And I don't remember that graffiti right there. That's pretty cool. That's, that's pre-Civil War. So, the Civil War was in the 1860s. Mason. Interesting. Illuminati confirmed. We'll see you on the next one. I'm walking back along the trail, headed out, and looky! Fishing line. I always hate to see fishing line anywhere uh, abandoned like that. That is pretty heavy. That's probably a good 30 test. Any animal, well, small animal or bird that would get caught in that, its foot, or, uh, yeah, well, well, I should say its foot <laughs> is doomed. Because they could get their foot down in there and get tangled around a post or a stump. And that would act like a trap and keep them there forever. Or get around their neck and uh, kill them, like hang them. And one of my earliest uh, gruesome childhood memories of about out in the woods like this was finding the skeleton of a, a songbird that had a piece of string around its neck and hanging from a tree near its nest. It was going to use the string to line its nest and somehow it tied around its neck, snagged on a branch, whap. He's hanging there until he dies and there was a skeleton, you know, a couple weeks, a couple months later for me to find. I always, always pick up fishing line like this, no matter where I see it. I can't always pick up the cans or the bottles, but this is what's going to kill them. Cans and bottles are unsightly to us, but this is what kills animals. Please, if you get the chance, pick this stuff up.